Adam Sandler is back in a dramatic piece uh, that takes place in space, co-starring a spider played by Paul Dano. I know the uh, spider aspect, it kind of sounds like an Adam Sandler comedy, but I think that's the intention. It's meant to throw you off with the out there silly idea, but the movie itself has serious discussions and emotions. So does it all work out? Sort of, for the most part. Like a lot of people, I'm glad to see Sandler take on some dramatic work, and teaming up with the director of Chernobyl seems destined for greatness. Sandler is, as the title suggests, playing a spaceman named Jacob, who's exploring an anomaly in space. On Earth, he's left behind his pregnant wife, played by Carey Mulligan, and he's dealing with the complications of being millions of miles away. It takes a psychological turn when a large spider shows up who digs into the spaceman's memories to get an understanding of the human race. I'm a fan of Sandler, and for the most part, he's pretty great. His accent, uh, hes he's got a Czech accent in this movie. It's a bit all over the place. Sometimes his uh, normal Sandler accent is leaking through. But I believe in the seclusion and sadness of being trapped on this spacecraft. Paul Dano uh, especially works as this ominous spiritual voice. At first I didn't realize that when the spider was talking you could actually see its mouth movements. Uh, I don't think Paul Dano did motion capture for this, I really doubt it. But there's curiosity in the spider's eyes, uh, which is like the defining characteristic of that character. It's not much, but it's effective. On the spacecraft it's a minimal set and they use it to their advantage. Also regarding the other sets, like on ground control, I really like that they have this sort of retro futuristic design. It kind of reminds me of Loki, like this is the future or at least modern times. Uh, a lot of the technology is advanced, but at the same time, it has an aesthetic and uh, old school design to it. They don't try to smooth out the edges. They don't try to make everything look sleek and shiny. It looks like the 1970s if it were today. As for the story, it takes a little too long for things to get going. Uh, you see early on questions about the spaceman's past, and these are building blocks for a character study, but in the end, it's stuff that you've seen before. There's marriage trouble due to Jacob's obsession with work, and he also has a difficult history with his father. Some of the emotion works, but a lot of the conversations and the resolution are pretty generic. It also doesn't help that the spider is pretty much telling the audience what to think. There's not a lot of tension because besides the discussions with the spider, there's not many complications in this mission. It's only towards the third act that things start to happen. There's uh, a malfunction in the communications with ground control and the space anomaly's presence starts to build. Carrie Mulligan doesn't have much to do as the pregnant wife, but you see her in the flashbacks and those are okay enough. Uh, what I really like about it is that it's the spider extracting them from Jacob's mind, so when you see the flashbacks, it's like you're watching it through a spider's eye, the way that they, um, the way they manipulate the screen and really stretch it out. I think overall that was a pretty cool effect. Through the flashbacks, you see how their relationship grew and some of the issues that Jacob has. But also there's these other flashbacks involving his father, and these ones I don't think connect as well to the storyline. I think if they would have allowed more time to develop the relationship, or both relationships, there would have been more to explore. I thought the ending was going to be bigger or more enlightening, but for what it is, it's fine. It's not like Interstellar where there's all these complex emotions uh, behind a story with a very driving mission, a very relevant mission. Here, the mission isn't as interesting, and unlike Ad Astra, another lone spaceman movie, the emotional core isn't as focused on. It's just a basic story about a marriage that's going through an understandable rough patch. But to be honest, I admire what it's trying to do. It is emotionally driven. And even if it's a bit unfocused and results in a generic ending, there is some suspense in the finale. It has a heartwarming core that you can't ignore.